Hello, I'm Kimberly Singletary, and on this episode of Carolina Classrooms, we are celebrating teachers. We'll meet all five state Teacher of the Year finalists, and we'll catch up with the current Teacher of the Year, Jeff Maxey. We'll also meet some students planning to become educators and learn about a program that supports educators just starting out in the beginning of their careers. At the end of the show, we'll show you the announcement of South Carolina's 2020 State Teacher of the Year. Our first State Teacher of the Year nominee is Tamara Cox, the School Librarian Media Specialist at Wren High School in Anderson District 1. In the library, it's kind of a unique position because I can bridge the gap between the content areas. So I have like a whole school perspective and we can connect those subjects. So research skills that are helpful in English are also helpful when they go to science and read articles for their science or biology class. So it's really fun just to make those connections with the kids and when they come into the library, they can do a little bit of everything. It can be history, science, English, research, everything kind of mixed together. I'm a library helper for Mrs. Cox, so we help her when classes come in and do activities and we help her set up around the library and shelf books. When other classes come in here, we just set up and we kind of decorate a little bit. We just help her out. I love it because it's super fun and she's just so nice to everyone and a nice role model to have at the school. She helps you with your homework and she asks you about like your personal life too to make sure that to have a personal connection with the students. She's really nice to all the students. She helps out with everything that you need, even if it's not book related. She's just really sweet. I allow myself to pine for matrimony's gifts to grace my heart. If truly you did wish to win my hand, you should have graced it with a wedding band. But most people probably assume as a librarian that I work with the English teachers, which we do. I do a lot of research lessons, but I also get to work with every other subject. So we have a forensic class that comes in here where they read books and short stories that involve a crime and then they recreate those crime scenes. So that's really fun. We um, read a nonfiction book called Blood Bullets and Bones this year and Skyped with that author with the forensics class. I have a project coming up with our foods class where we're analyzing marketing of food, especially junk food, to teenagers. And so we're gonna take the kids to the grocery store and look for those ads and try to analyze how they're manipulating us to eat more junk food. Well, I think the collaboration is definitely a benefit for both the teachers and for the students. Um, the students can see different areas, you know, where my expertise is in English. Um, she is able to pull in other areas, technology, science, social studies, and I think that just gives them a clear understanding of the material and what we're doing. She's able to help them with a variety of things. Some of the biggest stuff is making sure that students know what sources are, are good ones to use and then also having sources available if we're doing a project um, about Africa. She's able to pull books and novels that would work well for that. Um, she's able to help them distinguish between good sources to use online versus bad sources or sources to stay away from. She's able to help students not just with content, but with skills that they will need for the rest of their uh, high school and college careers. She has brought an energy to our school over the last two years where um, our library is truly the, the learning center of Wren High School. Uh, she collaborates with all types of teachers in our building to come up with creative lessons that benefit all of our students. Uh, from math teachers to science teachers to English teachers to uh, our family and consumer science teachers. She always has folks in and out of the library uh, doing very innovative things to benefit our students. Only moments known, my heart doth fling fair logic now away. I beg thee, take my favor for thine own. Perchance to call upon me soon, I pray. For Call me maybe? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. okay. She deserves every little bit of recognition she gets. She is a fantastic uh, teacher. She's an awesome librarian. She's a great educator. She's an advocate for all the special things uh, that we have going on. So congratulations, Tamara, on being a finalist for the State Teacher of the Year, and uh, good luck, and I hope you get everything you deserve. She really deserves it, yeah. 
I'm really excited for. It's very exciting. Um, I've been told that I'm the first librarian to get into the top five for the State Teacher of the Year, which is a huge honor, so I'm very excited about that. She's not your typical librarian who just checks out books. Uh, she is helping our students develop a love for reading. She's also helping them develop skills in research and um, informative information and looking for those things. And I think it's just a great honor for her and we're so excited for her. My message would be if I become the next teacher of the year is to really amplify the voices of our teachers. Um, right now, education is a hot topic in South Carolina, which makes me very excited and hopeful uh, for some changes that may be coming soon. And I just want to make sure that the teachers' voices are heard and included in those policies. So my main focus would be just amplifying our voices and making sure that the policies that are put into place are really helpful for recruiting and retaining the best teachers and providing the resources that our students need to learn. As you can see, the role of the school librarian has changed from someone who checks out books to a person who teaches and collaborates. The school library has changed a lot. Um, most people still have that stereotype of the shushing librarian that just checks books in and out. But as technology has become a huge part of education, we have embrace that technology and now we're seen as like the tech leaders in the school. So I never shush. Um, we have a loud library sometimes and that we try to be the hub of learning for the school because we can address all of the content areas and work with all the different subjects. So it's just an awesome place to be because we get to teach a little bit of everything and see all of our kids. We do not have quiet libraries anymore. That's that's gone. We do a lot with literature. We also do a lot with technology. Um, we're a place that kids are from the time they're four until they get out of elementary school here and that they'll find the same thing in middle and high school and public libraries college. So it's a great continuum and um, we want to make it a great place that kids want to be. So we have a library patio here and kids go outside and read and tents and we have reading boats and we do a lot of different things to get it to get us excited about reading. One thing that concerns all of the teachers and librarians is that our the third grade assessments um, are pretty low with um, the amount of third and eighth graders that are reading at or above grade level. So that's definitely something that we focus on. We have reading coaches that work with um, those students to try to improve those numbers. But that's definitely something that the librarians look at and try to address and make sure our students have access and that we have strong library programs to help those students improve. The best thing for students is to give them choice, which in the library, that's perfect. They have thousands of books to choose from. So we can find that one book that kind of like sparks their love of reading and try to build on that and give them more and more options to keep them reading. Um, as long as they're reading, they're gonna keep improving. So that's the main focus for us is just kind of spark that love of reading in all of our kids. I am Stephanie Frazier, the Vice President of Education at South Carolina ETV, and I am so excited to be sitting here with Ms. Fran Riser, who is one of my absolute favorite teachers. How are you today, Ms. Riser? I'm fine, even better after you said such a wonderful thing. Oh, well, it is very true. Uh, Ms. Riser, you are my fifth grade teacher at Bradley Elementary School. Um, and before we do anything else, I just want to say that as we think about celebrating teachers during the month of May and really all year long, I want to say thank you for all that you did that you probably didn't even know that you did to influence me um, in my education and just uh, my love for the arts and learning and also writing. I really appreciate you. Thank you. So can you talk to us a little bit about why you became a teacher? I became a teacher, first off, I didn't start off in fifth grade. I started as a high school English teacher, mm -hmm. primarily due to my love of literature and writing. And then when I had children, I realized, hey, those little kids are not so bad after all. So I got a master's in elementary education and 
that's how I wound up teaching you fifth grade. Ah, and and before the interview, you reminded me that it was fourth and fifth grade that you right. Yes. I was thinking when when I heard Stephanie Frazier, and I thought, I think she was in the class that I taught fourth grade, and then they moved me back to fifth grade, and those kids came with me. So uh, I yes. apologize for calling you a kid instead of a student, <laughs> but I'm retired now. I don't have to be teacher correct. I'm sure that teaching has changed just a little bit since you were in the classroom, um, but I think there are still some things um, that are probably core fundamental values that you would be able to share. Can you give any advice or um, offer any tips for teachers that are in the classroom? Well, I think one of the most important things about teaching is that you genuinely enjoy and like young people. Mm -hmm. I, certainly, I certainly can speak for myself and for others who um, that I still keep in contact with that remember your class and remember the Bradley B experience and we are glad that you chose to go into the teaching profession and want to thank you for all that you did to contribute to education and all that you are continuing to do with your writing um, and your work. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we yes. wrap up? I would like to thank you and your classmates for making my teaching career something that I cherish and enjoy and remember. You're welcome. <laughs> Our next Teacher of the Year finalist is Shelly Smith, a social studies teacher at Traveler's Rest High School in Greenville County. The best thing about teaching the class, I mean, just my, just the kids. Um, I, I have a, a real, a real love for a lot of these kids in this classroom. The fun part about teaching is first, you know, getting to meet these kids, getting to know them, and then getting to see them grow throughout the year and progress. Those are the things that I love about coming to work every single day and being a teacher. Um, you know, the, this, the strong points, I mean, you've got nearly 30 kids, you've got 27 kids in a classroom, and they are all very different and have different needs. So just trying to be the best teacher that I can be for each individual student. Okay. Okay. So like, what would you say as far as how many people are in the picture? A lot. Um, and on the back, it's like how segregation is morally wrong. Good. You build that relationship from day one um, and connecting with them first you have to know well, what is it that they, they like, what do they do in their free time and take an interest in these kids. Um, and then from there it's something as easy as standing at the door and saying good morning to some of them. I mean there are some students who walk in my classroom who haven't heard good morning, how are you doing? ever in the mornings. They have parents working second and third shifts. Um, so this is the first time some of them have, have heard, you know, good morning, well, how are you doing? Um, and some of them come in early and that's a perfect time to invest in those kids and see what they've got going on. I mean, Avengers just came out in game. Um, they're super excited about that. That's one of the things that, you know, when they come in, we can talk about that. Um, we talk about, you know, how things don't just work the snap of our fingers like Thanos does in Endgame, um, but translating that into historical context. So building that relationship relationship is key from the beginning of the year. Sometimes like we'll start up a conversation, everybody in the class gets engaged, it's fun, take a little, you know, like a little break, we share stories. She's really dedicated to what she does and she really gives it her all and she, um, she expects the same from us. She is constantly looking for new innovative ideas in the classroom and she is constantly improving her instruction based on data collected from her students based on student feedback. Um, she was one of the first teachers that I've ever seen who got, who created a real survey for her students. What do you like in my classroom? What really worked for you? What do you think I could have done better? Um, and she took that feedback and she grew from that and she took it seriously. And um, I think by doing that and by constantly looking for ways to improve um, it has really shown and she's seen great um, efforts by her students and she's had a lot of success with her students by doing so. I really like how she just keeps us engaged. She, we do different activities and she mixes it up a lot. It's never like the same thing. She does different things like we'll watch videos and then we'll have like a, a talk after or different things. Um, like activities like hoots and things like that, quizlets, really helps us 
keep us engaged. If you come in her classroom, you're not going to see the old-fashioned uh, teacher at the board, the sage on the stage kind of thing. Uh, Ms. Smith is going to have kids working in groups, not just one kid doing all the work and everybody else watching around. Everybody's participating in a lot of different ways, a lot of different avenues, a lot of different techniques. Um, all, everything from graphic organizers to computer-based work to, to computer-based games that are curriculum related. Uh, the bottom line is, is if, it, if it's new and works for kids, Miss Smith is doing it. I think it is amazing. She is possibly the best teacher I've ever seen. Uh, and I enjoy working with her each and every day, so it's, uh, it's actually a blessing to see her be nominated and she has a good opportunity to take it further. She's here early, she's here late, she is always there to help every single individual student. We talk about the students that need help and she goes out of her way to help every single one of them. Uh, and she never leaves a stone unturned, she's always on top of the game. Miss Smith is a phenomenal teacher. Um, since day one when she came here, this is her seventh year, she has gotten involved in the school in every way, shape, or form, uh, taken every opportunity to be a leader in our school. Um, she is a top-notch teacher, very current on uh, curriculum, methodology, uh, practice, uh, always looking for ways to improve in her classroom to help her kids out in any way that she possibly can. So if I was chosen as South Carolina's Teacher of the Year, first the message is to celebrate our students and to celebrate success um, because I think we can't do that enough. There are some really wonderful things going on in classrooms around South Carolina um, and not enough people know about the wonderful students that we have and the wonderful teachers and I think to, to continue to build on that for successful students, we also have to have successful teachers. Um, and so continuing to advocate for the teaching profession, to strengthen the teaching profession as a whole, but also to continue to be an advocate um, for teachers on all levels across the state. I, I've had several, actually. I would say probably my college professor inspired me the most. Um, he saw I had a, I wouldn't say gift, but maybe just a knack for painting. And he just kept on me saying, this is something you need to do. You need to keep practicing, you're going to get better, you're going to love this. And it's always been a part of me since. Many of the students in Victoria Merritt's teacher cadet class credit her for their interest in teaching. And they stress the need for more diversity in educators. They're an awesome group of young people. They are really, really great, you know, for being 16, 17, 18 years old, they're wise. They've taken what they've gone through in life and, and they're applying it. They, you know, kind of that idea of grow through what you go through. At first, I just took it because it was an AP credit and I wanted to boost my GPA. And I was just, I didn't really know what I wanted to do yet. So I just wanted to like explore different career options. And I always thought about being like an administrator, so that's why I take the class. So I have known since first grade that I have wanted to be a teacher. My first grade teacher inspired me so much. She was like a recent Clemson graduate and she just had such a vibrant personality and just from that moment on I just knew I felt called to education. Full transparency, like a lot of that comes from Miss Merritt. I genuinely believe that if I had any other teacher instructed me for a teacher cadet that I probably wouldn't be in the position I am right now. I wouldn't want to be an educator the way I am right now. I wouldn't be set up financially for college. Like she has had so much input into our lives, I know. And especially like my decision to become an educator. The whole teacher cadet program, obviously, you know, there's a lot you learn about the profession, everything, but with her specifically, it's her, you know, tenacity for the profession. Initially, the fact that it was an AP credit was why I took it, but like once I got into the class and like, you know, realized the impact that I have on the students and the change and the difference that I can make just by me being there, it was a done deal. <laughs> right now, I'm kind of looking more towards the first grade, second grade, only because I feel like kids at that age are such a sponge, and I feel like me being who I am and being a black man and the way I carry myself and articulate myself, I feel as if I feel like I have the biggest change on them because if I can get them to look at people like me and love them like how they love their own family, then I feel like that can kind of help the way they, or help change the way they see people like me all across, you know, everywhere else. So basically my goal is just kind of have them, you know, just be that change that they, that I didn't have when I was younger. 
I moved here my junior year. Um, I'm a military brat, so I'm not from here. Didn't know anything about the teacher cadet program. And I met um, our teacher, Miss Merritt, through swimming. I, we start swimming in August, or before school starts, and I heard about teacher cadet. And I was like, this is my program. I have to be in it. And at the time, it was full, and I talked to Merritt, and I was like, please, like, this is, like, I can see myself here. I want to be a teacher. I was that kid growing up. My brother and sister can attest. We played school every single day. <laughs> I had a whole classroom set up, and I, it was always just my favorite thing. And so when I heard about it, I was like, this is what I've got to do. And luckily, I was able to manage to get into it my junior year, and now I'm a senior, and this is my second year in the class, which is pretty cool. Since I was little, I've known I wanted to be a teacher. And so being that I wanted to be in the education field, I figured that the best class for me to take is Teacher Cadet, because it does go into depth so deep of what a teacher grows through and what, you know what I mean, that whole field and titles. And so I thought the best, it's kind of like almost picking my major in high school. With I feel like minorities are super underrepresented in the classroom. And, you know, when you don't have anybody to look up to and you never see anybody like you, then like, it's kind of like, why, why am I here? I feel out of place type of deal. So I know that um, growing up and having every one of my teachers be a white woman, that, you know, it's fine for me, but it's not fine for the, the black kid that's sitting next to me. I actually had um, one black or two black teachers in my whole career, and I'm a, I'm a senior. It's just, you know, once you have a sense of belonging, somebody that that has been through the same struggles as you, as a probably as an African American, as a Hispanic, you know, they have they have, they lived that life that you live in. You can relate to them. You can talk about stuff that's like going in your family life that may not be going in another racist family life, but it is common in yours. So that's why te teachers need to be represented. Minorities need to be represented in education. So so students can have a sense of belonging and they can feel like they're connected with the student body in the schools. For a big majority of our fourth quarter project, we had to actually student teach in an elementary school or a middle school. You got to pick and the grade and um, the specific subject and all that. I did fifth grade English over at Beach Hill Elementary School, which is down the road from here. And um, prior to that, we just observed a bunch of other schools like a Montessori school we went to, went to a Catholic school. And we just really get the full experience of what uh, being a teacher in titles, you know what I'm saying, and what goes into certain types of different schools, not just your traditional, you know what I'm saying, school that a majority of us go to. And along with that, like I said, the teaching, the student teaching that we had in elementary schools was probably one of my favorites, because just that experience of actually being in the classroom and finally able to talk to kids without just being in the classroom and, you know what I mean, figure, like hearing what elementary school kids will be like when you're in the classroom. Now I'm actually in there, so I'm seeing how they are and how they act, so it was pretty cool. Definitely take Teacher Cadet. This class is eye-opening. You get to really experience everything that you would experience in a classroom, and it really opens your eyes to everything that teachers have to deal with every single day. And it makes you appreciate all your teachers even more, and like your admin and your guidance counselors and everything like that. But definitely take Teacher Cadet. Stephanie Heckerl is a second grade teacher at Mamie P. Whitesides Elementary School in Charleston County School District. She is our next Teacher of the Year candidate. The thing that I love the most, I don't know, they're just so sweet. And it's just so amazing when you're asking them questions and you see that everything you've been teaching them throughout the year really comes together. And you know that you're gonna be making the world a better place. And they rise to the occasion. Well, they're very independent. Um, that's something we worked on at the very beginning of the year. I mean, we worked on social skills, collaborations. So it really builds that classroom community. And at the end of the day, those skills are essential for them to be successful in life. I think the challenges sometimes are class sizes, which is something we're really pushing to get changed um, at the state level. When you have so many kids, for example, uh, my students in here are from a grade kindergarten, reading on a kindergarten level, all the way to fourth grade. 
So that puts a lot of pressure to differentiate, which I want to do. I want to make sure I'm meeting their learning style needs, make sure I'm providing that diverse learning for them so that they can grow where they are. But it is very difficult because when you get materials, you know, they're targeted toward the grade level. So you're constantly, as a teacher, having to supplement and find new ways to get materials and things in the classroom that you need to meet, that, to meet the needs of all these learners. Probably classify myself as an actor a lot of the day. I mean, you really do have to diverse your delivery of instruction. Um, I use movement and voice inflection really gets them in. I'm not helping anymore. Yeah, it's too risky. Highlighter, are you hiding in the drawer? You better get up here now. <laughs> And I feel like if it's something that I would be interested in, then they're going to be interested in. If I'm sitting, I've stopped in the middle of a lesson and because I've been bored. I'm like, if I'm bored, they're going to be bored. And I'll just take it and go a totally different direction. But I do believe it's all in the delivery. It's making them excited about learning, wanting them, them wanting to come back and hear more, them wanting to be active participants. I'm basically a facilitator. I don't really look at myself as a lecturer. I facilitate their learning. So they're in charge and they know that. And they rise to the occasion. We learn lots of new things and we do fun stuff and we do science projects. What is the story mostly about? The great garbage strike. Strike. Why do you think they're striking? <laughs> because they didn't get paid enough. We do reading and math stations and sometimes we're doing and sometimes we do science stations on or er, science projects on Friday. Yeah, we plant salad and beans like that. My favorite part of the class is when you get to play with your friends and morning work. Getting the stuff out of the garden and eating it. It's a fun class. The kids are always happy. I believe that she really inspires the children to do their best and she sort of just lights a fire underneath all of them. Each kid sort of inspires to be their own individual self and she just really supports that. There's always something special about her classes. Ms. Heckerl's class is awesome. So the students learn so much every day. It is just, it's a learning lab. Um, lots of hands-on activities that are going on in her classroom. But what is so unique about Mrs. Heckerl is that she taps into the individual students. So what are their areas of growth? What are their strengths? And she really incorporates that for every single child in her classroom. She knows her kids inside and out. Um, she works with them not only with academics, but their social and emotional development, anything that she can do to support the families at home. So she just knows every single little piece of that child and what's going to make each one um, successful in her classroom. I think she just finds a success in everybody, whether it's a student or a colleague. She just finds success in them, and she's very real, and she's very down to earth, and you know where you stand with her. Very well deserved. I really, I've never worked with a teacher like her. She's so enthusiastic, and it just spreads to the kids, and, um, and it's, you know, it's a wonderful thing to see. But she has been a great leader when we sit around and we plan together things that we need. Why she not? provides us with a lot of materials that we may not have. She stays after school, she's very helpful, she always asks us if there's anything that we need and then she will provide the materials for us if, um, if there's anything that we don't have. So, and she has awesome attitude, I love working with her, she's amazing. She sends a lot of curriculum materials that she's had that work, she tells us how she uses them. There are projects that she's done with her second graders that we have all adopted in the other second grade classrooms and we'll bring the parents in and have a whole involvement and we'll set up uh, like a museum of these little dioramas with animals. Every time we're starting a new unit with writing, she always lets us know what she's doing and sometimes I steal some of those ideas. I'm like, well, let me get that form from you or can you email me this? We're just, the whole team is really good at collaborating. And so, and Stephanie comes to us and she gives us materials and ideas that she has and is also open to listening to what everybody else has. And we're all that way, so I feel like it works really well. My message would be to unite. I feel like our world is very di just divided right now. Um, I'd really like to see us come together more because the way that we're going to improve education is working together, not tearing one another down. I do believe we need to stand up for our rights, absolutely, but I also believe we need to be open to suggestions and teachers need to have more voice and more input as far as the new policies being adopted. I'm excited for her. 
I feel really excited and I feel really happy for her. We love it, <laughs> He was my fifth grade teacher. He was the first black male teacher I had. So remind you, I'm just 5'3 now. So in fifth grade, I was below four foot and he was six foot. He was a six foot tall black man with an afro. So he was like a god almost. <laughs> you know, he's so big. But he saw something in me that none of my other teachers saw. And he pushed me. And he, was, he looked at me, he was like, Shannon, I don't even know why you're still in the fifth grade. You sh you're way above these kids. And he pushed me to be um, a better me. And he pushed me to see something in myself that I had not saw. And it was him that started me on the journey to becoming a teacher. And when I look back at it, I know it was him. And I wanted to be able to say that I was able to reach kids and be there for them and see something in them that they did not see in themselves and show them um, opportunities that they can be what they want if you just put in the work and you put in it and be, and be disciplined about it. So it was that, and that along the way, there were other teachers as well. I had um, a history teacher and I had an English teacher in high school that is just, they were both just awesome. And they just showed me, and it wasn't just, I'm gonna pass you, it's like, I'm gonna teach you, and I'm gonna show you the, the way that you can become great. So, you know, I, I am who I am today because of teachers, honestly. Our next Teacher of the Year finalist is Sue Weems, an English teacher at Blackwood High School in Richland County, District 2. It has been an absolute honor and privilege to be nominated, first of all, by Blythewood High. I'm an active duty military spouse and our family moves every two to three years typically. And so sometimes I can't even get a job the first year or two that we live somewhere. And so I'm never there long enough to be awarded anything. And here I was hired the third day that we were in South Carolina and I have loved my time at this school. I love my time here in South Carolina and just to be recognized in this way, it's been such an affirmation of all the hard work that I've put into my teaching craft the last 20 years. She's very deserving of this and for her, the, the background she's had as a military spouse, as a military mother, she has moved from state to state and I couldn't imagine as, as, a, as a teacher to think of what it takes not only to stay at South Carolina to stay certified and up to date, but then let alone move from state to state, different rules, different expectations. And yet she goes through that every single time they move because she's that passionate about teaching public education. She is the perfect candidate. This is her fourth year with us and uh, she jumped in feet first. Um, we challenged her to take on some, some tough situations and tough kids and she has made this class her own. She has made a huge impact on the culture of this school. And, I tell you, as, as a first year principal, having someone like a Sue Weems in your building, she is a force multiplier. Um, she comes in and her infectious attitude towards being positive for the students, caring for them, challenging them, then all of a sudden you see her peers start taking on the same roles. She's the perfect candidate to represent us. Miss Weems, she's a really nice teacher. I think she tries her best to um, support the kids and she does stuff like other English teachers don't do. Like, right now we're going to work on a college essay. I've never worked on a college essay for like any other English teacher. So she does stuff that's like important. And I remember one time um, during, right before winter break, she taught us how to do our taxes. So it's like stuff that's useful outside of school. Four choices. The first is your personal essay for your college application, okay? Uh, I highly, highly recommend this one. In fact, I like to have them write for real applications as much as, off, as often as I can, just because I think they put more into it when they know it counts, when it's something that matters to them. And writing their college essay is something that's stressing them out right now, and they can get it done and have it ready for the summer. I always hear from parents each year that they appreciate that their students wrote their college essays before they get to the fall when the early admit um, deadlines are pressing. Um, they are learning critical reading, meaning they read a variety of texts and also non-print. We watch film or TED Talks or 
Uh, we analyze art, cartoons, so much of what our media today is is visual, and so they need to know how to break down what are you reading or what are you seeing, and what are the explicit messages, but what things are also implicit, what things is it trying to convince you of that maybe you hadn't thought about, and so that's critical reading. They are also doing a great deal of writing for a number of different purposes. Uh, as you saw, the college essay is just one that's personal writing, but they also need to know how to write descriptively, how to tell a great story. I think in so many fields today we we need to know how to tell our stories. Everything from an interview to um, a business proposal, all of these contain a story. How are you going to overcome the obstacles to become who you need to be? And so um, they do the writing and uh, there's a lot of communication, both uh, academic conversations and discussions and helping them to articulate their opinions and to learn how to listen to each other and discuss really difficult topics sometimes. Yeah, we always say that Sue just must clone herself because there's, it's, we, we're amazed that one person can do all the things she does and I mean it's, it's very rare that there isn't some book that, like I'll, I'll talk about a book and she'll, oh yeah, I, you know, and she'll remember the book and can even probably pull out a couple of quotes from the book, you know. And we're always like, of course you've read that book, you know. Of course, of course you know this author. Of course you've heard this TED Talk. That um, she's just, just a perfect example of a teacher who, you know, continues to learn and um, didn't, didn't just, you know, go to college and then just become a teacher and stop learning. She's always learning, you know, always trying new things and. She's uh, definitely not one of the teachers who, you know, laminates her lesson plans. She's it's always a new lesson plan, never does the same thing twice, and um, just a great example of a lifelong learner. She, she's like, she's more than a teacher, like, she's like, she's there for you, like, she's not just like, do my work and then get the grade, like, she tells you what you need to do work for, and she's like, I already know you're going to procrastinate, so you might as well go ahead and do it anyway, like, she's like a... She's like real life. I'm really proud of her and I'm happy for her and her family. I think that um, it's well deserved. I was proud because I, I, I love Ms. Williams. If I am named Teacher of the Year, I hope to inspire teachers to continue to tell the stories of what it is to be a teacher today. It's so different than it was when I started teaching in 1997, and a lot of teachers have found their voices this year and realized that they need to tell those stories, and I hope that they can continue to amplify that voice. The Teacher Clothes Closet is a program run by the Palmetto State Teachers Association. Pre-service teachers are invited to shop at no cost through donations to find clothes to wear for student teaching and job interviews. The mission of the Palmetto State Teachers Association is to support public education. And in, under that umbrella, you have our teachers, you have our students, you have our support staff, Everybody that comes together to make education work in South Carolina, that's the mission of PSDA, is to support those uh, stakeholders. About four years ago, we were contacted by Kim Smoke, who was um, a teaching fellows um, direct campus director at the University of South Carolina. She was very concerned about students that she had who were getting ready to begin their directed teaching and they didn't have the clothes to wear on multiple days of the week. They um, were really struggling to find the resources to put together those clothes. So we felt like this was a community service where PSTA could step in and that's how our first clothes closet was held. It was a very small event. It was in our office and we invited just USC at that time and from there it's grown over over the past four, and five, four to five years, and we now have multiple colleges across the state, different regions, and we actually have people calling us, asking us to come to their schools. We provide free professional attire to students who are majoring in education at the colleges and universities in South Carolina. They are free to come and shop, take as much as they want. Um, we talk to them about appropriate wear when they're in the schools, as well as um, tips for interviewing. Being able to come and get clothes like this for free, as an education student, uh, we don't really have a whole lot of money lying around paying for college. So it's really nice being able to come and get this stuff because a lot of people don't have access to this kind of thing. 
So for people to be able to come in and get this stuff, I'd like it opens the doors for more people to be able to go into education and succeed. I'm actually going into student teaching next semester and one of my biggest concerns was what am I going to wear every day? Now I have to dress professionally every day, be ready for interviews, ready for possible jobs, and this really gives me an opportunity to grow my professional wardrobe for next semester and even while I'm out in the field teaching. These teachers, they, they're faced with so many challenges as first year teachers and to be able to remove a barrier like professional attire um, it's something that's important. It's something that's needed, um, even from the interview uh, process. Being able to go out and go to different interviews and not have to worry about, hey, I only have one suit, or especially if they have interviews lined up every day. Um, and even once they get in the classroom, being able to wear different types of clothing every day, that's one less thing that they have to worry about. And they can focus on educating students because that's why they went to school, is to become um, those phenomenal teachers. Being able to get professional attire for little to no cost is very important, especially when education majors have to go into the field and look professional, and that's part of their grade. We get graded on professionalism, whether it's behaviors or how you look, so it's very important to be able to look your best, and sometimes that's hard to do as a college student. <laughs> Like first impressions make a big difference, especially as an education student going and meeting teachers and principals and administrators. Uh, if you go in and you're not dressed to succeed, then you're making a bad impression and you're trying to get hired. So I feel like it makes all the difference. This program means a lot because it's kind of teachers supporting new teachers or future administrators or like I want to be a school psychologist specifically. And it's important to have the support from external cert um, external sources when you don't usually have it. And we are in the middle of a teacher shortage crisis here in South Carolina and one of the big things is recruiting the best and brightest of South Carolina into the education profession. This is a way that we can take away one of those barriers when they get into the program. I love the fact that we're providing a need that they have. We're um, coming to them, we're able to interact with them, talk to them, and just to see their excitement over getting ready to go into the classrooms. That's what it's all about. The students of South Carolina will benefit from these teachers who are coming through our program. So it's kind of a trickle down effect. We just felt like it was a way that we could address that teacher shortage just through a community service. It's important that we just provide a service for uh, future educators in South Carolina. Um, as we travel the state, um, in particular, programs like the Call Me Mister where, where we can impact future male teachers, which we know in South Carolina and across the nation there's a shortage, and be able to provide professional attire for um, upcoming male teachers and teachers in general is just so important um, to remove that barrier from, from, from their lives. For more information on the Teacher Clothes Closet, contact the Palmetto State Teachers Association. Shonda Jefferson teaches biology at Fairfield Central High School in the Fairfield County School District. She is our next Teacher of the Year nominee. I try to give my students access to careers and opportunities in the STEM field. And that's one thing that I'm extremely passionate about. I love getting the students engaged, getting their hands dirty in the science activities and doing investigation, personal investigations, and just exploring the world around them, encouraging them to be curious and inquisitive and to think, to think critically and to be able to express themselves and explain what it is that they're noticing going on around them. So I love teaching science and it's all about getting them excited and hopefully a lot of my students will be able to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Some people like McDonald's. My favorite thing in McDonald's is their fries. So when we go to McDonald's, we eat our fries. So inside of our stomach, we have an acid called hydrochloric acid. And we've chewed our food now, but that acid breaks it down a little more. We're gonna start dissecting like a sheep brain or something like that. That's very interesting to me. I wanna be a forensic scientist and stuff like that might pop up or whatever. And I like 
that she doesn't make anything boring. Like I've never had a boring day in her class. It's, everything's just so interesting. We're always hands-on. She's always hands-on with her students. She's always, you know, I'm known for coming up with crazy ideas, but she comes up with ideas with me. Um, so I love to feed off that energy of what else can we do to make learning fun. She makes learning fun. And so you, you learn and you don't realize that's what you're doing because she has such a passion for it. Um, I come in here and I learn things and you know, she incorporates other curriculum into her classroom so it's not just a science classroom but she's tried to make those connections for kids with real world application or to English class or to social studies. Um, so she does that, she looks at that whole child so it's, it's beyond just imparting my science knowledge but I think because the kids get that from her they're willing to run through the wall for her to achieve success. So she is that teacher that every principal dreams of. So she's very open and willing to collaborate and share best practices with her colleagues. So when you have someone that will work hard with their kids but will also help to build the capacity of others, then it just grows through your building. So she's awesome. I love teaching with her. Um, she is great at collaborating with other teachers. We work really well together. We do teach the same class. Um, and so just having her here as our department head and also another teacher that's more experienced uh, in the sciences has been fantastic for me learning from her. Her dynamic personality is first and foremost one way that she's supportive. Um, she's always got a smile on her face, typically always, you know, in an upbeat mood or happy. Um, and so just bringing that type of energy and that vibe to our school uh, is really supportive. Um, she's also supportive of other departments and activities. I'm a track coach. She's been at our cross country and track meets many times and I've seen her also attend other events throughout uh, on our campus as well. I had a bad day one day and she was able to you know cheer me up. I was able to get my mind off of my problem and it just made my day. For me the best part is being able to have a choice in whether I want to work alone or with a group. Um, because I'm able to make this choice, I've made many friends, and it's usually hard for me to do that, so it's cool to do that here. I really do consider us a big family here, and so it's just, it's like your sister winning some great award, and you're just in the background going, that's my sister, <laughs> I know her, <laughs> you know, she's with us, <laughs> you know. And it just kind of um, represents and um, reminds and puts out a different message about Fairfield Central High School and Fairfield County. So, and that message is that we are doing great things and not just, it's not just a sound bite. We're doing great things with our kids and it shows through her representing us and she represents us very well. If I was selected Teacher of the Year, I would say that teaching and learning creates our future and everything that we do as teachers in the classroom, we set the foundation for what students are going to do as far as their careers and as far as their college. So we prepare them for college, we prepare them for the future, and as teachers that's a powerful job and a powerful position and I think that our job is you know, the most important out of you know, all the different careers because we're actually building and preparing everybody or preparing our students to go into the workforce. I believe that it starts with celebrating all teachers. This Teacher of the Year experience has been mind-blowing. You know, to go on social media and see your face on social media and over 25,000 likes on that. But I want those teachers that are in a, a small town like Allendale to get recognition for what they're doing in their classrooms because I know that they're working hard. And even the larger schools, making sure that all teachers have the opportunity to be celebrated and also giving them the opportunity for their voices to be heard when we're making decisions about educational policy. So that's very important to me. You know, and as Teacher of the Year, that's one thing that I would push for, ensuring that teachers are equipped with the tools that they need to use their voices and their stories and the stories of their students to advocate for education. We caught up with the 2019 Teacher of the Year, Jeff Maxey, to find out how his year has been. 
It's been an amazing year. Um, I've been able to travel the state of South Carolina and been in so many amazing schools, in so many amazing school districts to see what, um, see what teachers are doing. Um, you know, as a teacher, sometimes we get kind of locked in our own little classroom and uh, we only know what we do or the teachers on either side of us. And so this has been an amazing opportunity to, to see teachers in action, to see the creativity that we have in South Carolina. Certainly we're at a point of nationally, but specifically in South Carolina, a crisis uh, of teachers. Uh, we need more people to consider the profession. Uh, as I've been talking to high school students, talking to uh, even middle school students, um, I think we have to change the dialogue. Uh, perhaps the old question used to be, what do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, we've got to change the question to, how do you want to change the world? And introduce teaching as one of the avenues that you could truly change the world. Uh, I met a university student who's a senior, getting ready to graduate this May. Uh, he'll enter uh, one of our South Carolina classrooms as a social studies teacher uh, in the fall. And I asked him, uh, why did you choose teaching? And he said, I was a teacher cadet in high school, but I wasn't sure I really wanted to go into teaching. Um, but then I heard a presentation by a state teacher of the year four years ago, uh, who said, there's a lot of different choices you can make uh, in careers. Choose one where you make a difference. And he said that I couldn't get that out of my head. And one day I told my teacher cadet instructor, I want to make a difference. I want to become a teacher. And, and so I was inspired by that and his story uh, to think about the difference that teachers make. Um, I read a quote recently uh, by Jim Collins uh, in a book called uh, From Good to Great. And he says, a great vision without great people is irrelevant. And truly in South Carolina, if we're going to achieve the great vision that we have for our state in every, in every capacity, especially in education, we need to have good people in our classrooms. And I've really, this year, uh, it's continued to be impressed upon me how much we need great teachers in order to accomplish our great goals. Uh, regardless of laws that have been passed through history, uh, regardless of um, outside influences, the greatest factor for student growth, um, regardless of what study you look at, is not curriculum, it's not buildings, it's not even great athletics. It always boils down to great teachers in the classroom and because great teachers uh, are going to influence great students and great students are going to grow our state. I think that teacher collaboration is key uh, for uh, teacher growth. Um, the idea that a teacher goes into their classroom and closes the door and they're alone in that room, um, teachers won't stay in the profession very long if they feel that they're alone. Uh, we need uh, teachers to figuratively open their doors, uh, to be in each other's classrooms. We need more opportunities for teachers to collaborate um, within disciplines and cross disciplines, uh, within the same age group and across age groups, um, so that teachers can grow in their profession. Uh, they can see what other teachers are doing. Um, they can share the struggles uh, of teaching with each other and recognize that they're not alone uh, in their work. Uh, and then they can also uh, be a support system and encouragement uh, for each other. And that only happens um, when we open those doors and we collaborate together. Uh, so I'm excited about going back into my classroom uh, to take those same strategies and ideas, uh, but to continue to be an advocate for the teaching profession, to continue to be a voice um, for teachers uh, and be a voice for our students. Um, this year has taught me so much about uh, the opportunities that each of us have uh, to share uh, our experiences, to allow our experiences to become a part of um, someone else's growth. And so I look forward to continuing to do that throughout South Carolina as well. You've met all five finalists now. Let's find out who will be South Carolina's next Teacher of the Year.
have a drum roll. Red seal South Carolina on the back. And our uh, South Carolina Teacher of the Year for 2020. I say the first name, you say the last name. Go ahead on, sister. Chandra. Henderson. <laughs> tonight. I feel so blessed to stand among all these fantastic educators. I have enjoyed connecting with you all this year and I look forward to continuing our relationship as a forum. I want to take a moment to give a round of applause to all the great teachers in this room and the 50,000 plus across the great state of South Carolina. Teachers fill many roles in their students' lives. They are not just educators, but caregivers and counselors as well. They put in long hours, and they make personal sacrifices for their students. For all you do, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Keep in touch on our Facebook page and our website. Have a fantastic summer. <laughs>